Hello everybody, Evil Ted here. Prop Monkey Studios has been doing head casts for decades now, but this is his first time working with a new product called Body Double Silk. This product was provided by SmoothOn. SmoothOn was nice enough to give him enough product to not only do some testing and to get his head casting ninjas a little up to speed on how it works, enough to do a head cast you're going to be seeing today in this video. Prop Monkey and his head casting ninjas mission today is to make a perfect, accurate head cast with virtually no bubbles and no saggy face. This will give them a nice, accurate head cast for um, making helmets or sculpting makeup appliances on too. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. If you've done live casting before, you'll know how important it is to have everything ready to go. You wanna make sure all your supplies are laid out in order as they're going to be used. This makes it easier to check if you see if anything's missing. For this head and shoulders cast, the team is going to use six rolls of six inch extra fast plaster bandages. They were cut 24 inches uh, long strips with smaller strips for the nose area. They also had a bucket of warm water to be used for the bandages. On a separate table, they have made ready body double silk into several small batches. They're also adding some silicone thinner into the mixes. The silicone thinner does weaken the silicone a bit, but the benefits outweigh the loss. Six ounces of silicone plus, 1.5 ounces of silicone thinner for borders and strips. Two sets of six ounces of silicone for the ears and ponytail opening. 20 ounces of silicone plus five ounces of silicone thinner for the second coat. Three sets of 20 ounces of silicone for the thicker second coat. They'll also add a dash of red silicone pigment for the blue part. This will change the color for the silicone to help them see the areas they haven't covered with the second coat. And one ounce of silicone for the nose holes. Also have ready to go stir sticks, gloves, paper towels, and so on. Complete supply list posted below. As a part of the setup, the ninjas make silicone strips to reinforce the boundaries of the mold. They do this with six ounces of body double silk, in the blue part mix, they add 1.5 ounces of silicone thinner. This will make the silicone flowable. Then it's mixed with the yellow part, then poured into a 21 inch by four inch by quarter inch deep plastic trout. After it sets for 20 minutes, it's pulled out and cut into three strips. Then the strips are measured and cut to length. Nathan is in charge of all the mixing and pouring of the silicone for this video. He is doing as much pre-mixing as possible before we begin working on Savannah. This will take out one less step in the final mixing process. Before you choose a model, it's important to make sure that your subject is not claustrophobic. On the day of live casting, be sure your subject has washed their face with soap and water and not to have any makeup on or piercings. It's good for your model to wear loose clothing and be comfortable. Wearing shorts and being barefoot is also a plus. It is important to make sure your model can breathe easily through her nose. Any allergies or cold must be under control. Explain to your model what's exactly going to happen and how long it's going to take. Savannah Polson is our model for this video. She's a cosplayer that goes by the name The Real Queen of the Jungle and you can find her on Instagram. Savannah is first wrapped in a plastic trash bag to protect the areas that are not being cast. She is placed in a low back chair that is raised to make it easier for the team to work on her. The model is going to have to hold a pose for a very long time, so make sure that she is very comfortable. Next, Liz has cleaned up all the oils from Savannah's face, neck, and shoulder with rubbing alcohol. This will help the adhesion for the bald cap to stick better to the skin and keep the body double silk from beating up. Now for the bald cap. There are three types of bald caps that are used. Latex bald caps are most common and you can find them anywhere. They're strong, flexible, and cheap. They do work well with adhesives, but do not work well with silicone because they actually prevent the silicone from curing. Vinyl ball caps are not very strong or flexible. They're more expensive, but they do work well with adhesives and silicone. Silicone ball caps are unavailable to purchase, so you have to make them yourselves. They're semi-strong and flexible, but don't work well with adhesives. And because they're made of silicone, they'll become one with the mold. Because Savannah has long hair and she refuses to shave her head for the video, the life casting ninjas are faced with a problem. What to do with all that hair? There are two different solutions that we can use in this situation. The first solution is to go down the back of the neck with the hair, covering it with a ball cap. 
This will make the final cast a lot smoother than the top of the head, but it will add bulk to the back of the neck and upper back. A second solution is to bring the hair up through the top of the ball cap. This will give the cast a more accurate definition of her head, but it will leave a lump where the hair will come out of the top of the ball cap. Prop Monkey Studios and his life casting ninjas decided to go with the latex ball cap and take Savannah's hair up to the top of her head like a unicorn. Wait a second, you guys can't use latex ball cap with silicone? That ain't gonna fly. Ah, I see. Prop Monkey and his life casting ninjas knew this was a big no-no, but using the latex ball cap has many benefits. So they came up with a solution. They used Prop Monkey's fine finish as a barrier coat to prevent the latex from coming in contact with the silicone. It goes down thin and smoothly and dries fast. Wow, that's ingenious. So the latex ball cap was pre-coated with fine finish. Then Liz, with help from Marcus, applied a bald cap and prosade for the adhesive. First, Liz stretched the ball cap over Savannah's head. Then she marked the spots where her hair is going to come through. She removes the cap, cut out the hole for the unicorn braid, and then places the cap back on Savannah's head and pulls the ponytail through the hole. Next, Liz stretches the cap again tightly and draws with a sharpie where the cap needs to be trimmed. With safety scissors, she cuts along the lines. Liz then applies the prosade to the skin and the cap. Prosade is like contact cement for skin, and you can apply it in the same way. Marcus used a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. After a quick drying time, she then applies the cap to the head. Liz and Marcus then work to protect the unicorn braid with plastic wrap and aluminum foil. Applying a ball cap is a skill on its own. Liz has done many ball caps in the past, but this was her first time pulling hair through the top. She says in retrospect that this step would have been better to complete first before gluing down the cap. It created some wrinkles, which we had to use tape to smooth it out. The ninjas are almost ready to goop up Savannah with the body double silk. Before they do that, I should mention the benefits of making a head cast with silicone over using alginate. One, the mold is reusable. You should be able to do several castings from one mold. Number two, instead of being able to cast plaster, you can also use resin and foam. Three, body double silk sticks to itself, so you can work in segments adding support where it's needed. There is no one right way to cast a head. It all just depends on your needs. Because part of Prop Monkey's goals is to have a mold with virtually no bubbles or face sagging, he decided to apply the silicone in a different way. One of the ninjas will thin down the first coat of silicone with silicone thinner. This will create a lighter layer causing less face sagging and also make it easier to achieve no bubbles. Once the first layer is cured, it'll help support the face when the second layer is added. The thin layer will be less strong, but it will be worth it. One side effect to adding silicone thinner is that the first layer is more sensitive to oily skin, preventing the silicone to cure quickly. Liz applied a thin coat of body double release cream. This solves the issue by creating a good barrier between Savannah's skin and the silicone. Marcus puts cotton into each ear, preventing the silicone to trickle down into the ear canal. Then he adds the body double release cream to the exposed side of the cotton. This will help the silicone from sticking to the cotton. Once that is done, the prop monkey gives the bald cap another coat of fine finish while Marcus hits it with a blow dryer. Savannah is now prepped and ready to go. It's almost time to goop up Savannah. There's one thing that the prop monkey likes to do before doing a head cast. He is adding some foam clay behind Savannah's ears. He's going to explain that in just a bit. Okay, I'm here with my crew. We've been working on a special project. Uh, we are using Smooth On's Body Double Silk, and we're really pleased with it. And we've come up with some really good solutions to some issues. And so we are going to do a full head and shoulder cast today. Our model is Savannah. Without further ado, we are going to begin. Okay, you guys out of the way. <laughs> Okay, so behind the ear, there is this great space between the ear and the head, and it's always been an issue when, when casting. If you're casting in plaster, the ear always breaks off. If you're casting in resins, it's hard to get the resin back in there. So we're going to fill in that space between the ear and the head with some uh, foam clay. Okay, I've done this with alginate, uh, but foam clay is a new thing that we're starting to use. One of the guys here came up with this idea, and it's going to put this back there and just tuck that in. Okay, that's looking good. Mm -hmm. 
We're actually going to work on the ears first because they have a lot of detail on them. So right now I'm just going to work on the inner part of the ear and get that in there. I don't want to disturb uh, that uh, foam clay too much on the outside, so uh, I'm going to work in all the nooks and crannies first. That's looking pretty good. Once I do that, I can whip out the tongue depressor. So now I'm just going to let it drip around there without pressing on the ear too much because I don't want the foam clay to pop out of socket. And just let that ooze down. Uh, I also am going to start building up a thick layer around our hole up here that Savannah's hair is going through. Get that nice and thick. Up the other one, and whoever wants to take the other ear. Okay, let me finish up this one. Let's make this look a little prettier. A little hole right there. Okay. I've talked to Bop Monkey about this before. The model pose is very important. You need to think ahead of time about the look or the need of the live cast. So with this kind of pose, is will be really good for working on uh, facial prosthetics and uh, maybe helmets and stuff like this if you're into cosplay or costuming and stuff like this. So you don't want her slumped over. Uh, she's going to have to hold this pose for about an hour with this process too. So make sure uh, that you have a model that can do that. And Savannah can definitely do that. Marcus and Liz work on the other ear with the remaining silicone, then reinforce the unicorn braid base, and then add a coat on the back of the head. Okay, while we're finishing up the ears, I think it's a good time to talk about the thin coat that we're going to put on next. Uh, with live casting, you know, what's the right procedure depends on what you're trying to get across. And uh, you, if you just need a quick and down and dirty head cast, where the shape of the face doesn't matter a whole lot if it starts to droop, uh, then you have a lot of freedom. You can do it really quick. If you're trying to make something really refined and like fine art, and uh, then you may want to do a, a cast, clean up a, a plaster cast, and then make a master mold from that. We're going to do something in between. We are going to put the first coat of body double silk on really thin, and we're using a special silicone thinner. That will keep the soft tissue area of the face from sagging so much. And then once that firms up enough, then we're gonna stick on a 50-50 mix of the body double silk, which will be a lot stronger, and that'll be our final coat. And so by putting on the thin coat first, what it'll do is it'll capture the detail better, It'll help get rid of the bubbles easier, and it keeps the area of the face right around here between the eyebrow and the chin, keeps it from sagging so much. No matter what you put on the face, it's going to sag a little bit, but by making this thinner coat, it's going to look really nice in the end. Okay, are you ready? Okay, mix. Okay, these are the things, my sticks, <laughs> I'm going to be using uh, when we work on Savannah. Uh, the popsicle sticks come later when we work thicker, but when we work thin, I'm going to be using these brushes. These are just disposable brushes, and this is my special stick that I use when I work around Savannah's nose. Now, I am going to be the only one working around this area of her face. Only one person should work around the nose, and I'm constantly keeping an eye because this stuff is sliding over her face pretty fast. And if you're not careful, both nostrils will get clogged up with silicone. So I'm always looking at it, always removing the silicone, making sure she can breathe easily. Prop Monkey and his head casting hinges are ready to pour the silicone over Savannah's face. So things are going to move quite fast. Before this moment, Prop Monkey reminds the ninjas not to joke around loudly. We want Savannah not to laugh while the silicone is on her face, causing air bubbles to form around her mouth. Savannah is also given some verbal cues. When the prop monkey tells her when he's working around her eyes, she is to squeeze them tight together so as to prevent any silicone from leaking into her eyes. Then when he moves down the face, she can relax her eyelids for a more natural look. When the prop monkey starts to work around her mouth, she can tighten her lips together. And then when he's done, Savannah can then push her lips out in a more of a relaxed state. This will give her mouth a natural look. Okay, guys, come over here. You've got to take the shoulders in the back, and I am going to take the front. Okay? Yeah, pour right here, and then work on the back. 
Tony right there, stop. Okay, Savannah, I'm going to work around your eyes. Squint. Pour a little more on top. Liz, if you want to come around and work under her chin. Okay. Okay, there we go. Here. And I'm going to work around your mouth. Okay, and you guys get underneath the chin, and I'm going to start on the nose area. Right here, I'm going to push up into her nostril just a little bit to get that really nice shape. Uh, when you work with algin, it's algin that's get really thin like this too. Oh, it, does it? Yeah, and so it gets a little. You, you get used to it. You just get used to working with it. Okay, so I got the nostrils looking really good. Now we use the, uh, the special silicone uh, thinner on this, and the ratio is a little bit more than what was recommended. Uh, we did a lot of tests to make sure it was going to work okay. So the ratio is 20% silicone thinner with 80% of the body double silk. Is this is our thin layer. Is it okay so. at this point if it's slightly translucent? Like over yes, the yes it is. Yeah, it's gonna go a little translucent in some areas and that's perfectly okay. Yeah, give me some here then. Yeah, and just go down a little bit below where you think we're gonna stop, just so we have some overlap. Yeah, I, def I would go down all the way here okay. with that. Okay, and that. So I'll make sure there's not too much on her lip. I don't want it to sag. Okay, so the, the first coat is done. Uh, some areas look a little translucent, but it's a nice thin coat and it's gonna capture a lot of detail. Uh, the next coats are going to be uh, thicker coats. So it's gonna be the recommended mixture of 50-50 of part A, part B, and that'll add a lot of support. Wow, that was fun to watch. Prop Monkey didn't mention this, but the tip of the nose usually ends up being the weakest part of the mold. So he made sure to thicken it up a little on the first coat, and he will make sure that the second coat has plenty. Before the second layer is applied, the first layer needs to be firm to prevent sagging. As we go back in action, we'll see that the head casting ninjas will be adding the border strips. Also, the red pigment in the second layer batch gives a great contrast to the first coat, helping to identify where the second coat has been applied or needs to be thicker. Now back to the action. And it should squeeze out. As soon as you put it on there, it should squeeze out to the side. So that's probably enough to do it. Go ahead and put that strip on. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure it's really good up the top here too. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, big gap there. There we go. When it squeezes out the side, it's going to look good. Okay. And go all the way past the shoulder, or, you know, past the back, around the shoulder. So this is for the bottom half? Basically. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. Now come around the other side and go on the shoulder. Okay. Are you doing okay, Savannah? Okay. Some right in there. Yeah. Liz, here's a strip for over there when you connect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's it. Let it go. Yeah, go and let's get this. As thin as we can, let, let's work this on the back side. Nice and smooth. And once you empty your, your bucket, uh, Nathan, go ahead and mix the yep. next one right away. I'm going to put it right on her head. And okay. You can do it. Raspberry sorbet. Okay. Raspberry sorbet. Yes. Raspberry sorbet. Okay, get that nice and thin. You don't want anything thicker than probably a quarter inch. I know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 
it's at that point now where just, yeah, just get it smooth and Nathan's mixing up the next batch. The head casting ninjas are applying the second coat of the three different batches. As soon as the batch has been emptied out of the mixing cup, Nathan will start mixing the next one. This gives them more time and control as they work with the silicone. They are also working from the back to the front. This gives the face area even more time to cure and get firmer. Yeah, I'm going to work down. Okay, we're going to go over your eye area. There we go. I don't think you need to squint because you're well coated. Always keeping an eye on the mouth or on the nose, making sure the cheeks don't get too much right now. That's the last bit. Okay. I'm pull it down. Right. Okay. Yeah, and start mix up that last batch. At this point, it's important for the ninjas to smooth out the body double silk. Now it's impossible to get a super smooth surface, but you want to get it smooth enough that there won't be any ridges to prevent the plaster shell from pulling off easily. Okay, that was our second coat. We're going to come with the last one, and that'll finish up all the green areas that we don't have coated. Okay, everything's looking good. Smooth out a few areas. Okay, we're just about done with this. We're going to let it set up for a good 10 minutes, and then we're going to start putting the plaster bandages on. At this time, we're adding plaster bandages. The first strip that will be going down will be the front half of the shell. Make sure that the strips doesn't go behind the ears. If it does, it will create a lock, and it will prevent the shell from coming off. All the bandages are doubled over, either width-wise or lengthwise, when applied. This will speed up the process by putting two layers down at a time. In the end, there will be at least four layers over the entire head and at least eight layers on the edge. Right on the ear, but not over the ear. Go right on top of that piece of silicone. And then I'll just flop this north like that. Just work that in. Okay. Come around here. Connect these two. the nose and yeah don't go down below but you can go over the tip create that nice little triangle shape if you never work with plaster bandages it might be yeah. good to note the process yeah, first you'll see the prop monkey double over the bandages and dip them into warm water the warm water helps the bandages set faster then he will quickly pull them out and give them a quick squeeze to rinse out the excess water when he places it down on top of the previous layer, he will massage it uh, so the yeah, bubbles no, 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 are worked out back. between the bandages. These are extra fast uh, setting bandages, so uh, once we get the water on them, they set in about two and a half minutes. It gets slick, and that way it's connected to the lower one without bubbles. 
be smooth. Once the front shell sets up, Prop Monkey and Nathan will start building up the back shell of the mold. To keep the two halves from bonding together, they will use some saran wrap as a barrier. Make sure the silicone is clean and dry to help the plastic stick to the body double silk. It's also very important the front and the back plaster shells overlap the correct way to prevent the two halves from locking. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put some saran wrap uh, over the plaster bandages so it covers the silicone and the plaster bandages uh, creating a nice barrier between the two halves. Let me get this half and let's go uh, a little bit more on this side. Okay right there that should do it. You got enough over there? Okay and the saran wrap sticks really well to the uh, silicone and that's why I like using the saran wrap. Okay yeah this is awful. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> Get a new glove on here in a second. Okay, here we go. Work on our borders again. And I gotta be really careful that I don't overlap my border, that I stop halfway on my seam so I don't have any locking issues. Okay, now you can start doing the back. Must be right here. Just. Yeah, yeah, I think we only have one around the, the back, so we probably need one more layer across the back. Okay, looking good. I'm going to work on the edges, keep on pressing them in. And I'm gonna let you do the rest, and I'm just gonna help. <laughs> Sooner or later, we're gonna get smart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you can get the other one to Nate, and he can do the other shoulder. Okay. We're almost done with the plastering. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's very well done. Yeah. Prop Monkey is getting ready to take off the mold from Savannah. And for some weird reason, headcasters have a strange tradition painting on happy faces on the plaster cast shell. In this next scene, Prop Monkey and the headcasting ninjas probably display their artistic talent. Uh, in just a couple more minutes, the plaster bandages will be hard enough to take off. And you know when they're ready to take off is if we start moving the edges of them and they seem very crisp. They, they're not soft, they're not pliable, they're very rigid. And then we know it's time to take them off. So as I'm feeling it, the heat is pretty warm. So Savannah is feeling some hot temperatures under there and we've been fanning her off. A uh, couple more minutes and we should be able to pop this off. Okay, uh, we're going to take the plaster mold off and we're going to pull up. Before I do this, I'm going to squeeze the foil a little bit tighter together and make sure that we can get this around uh, her extra ponytail here. There we go. Uh, I'm going to lift up from the shoulders first and slowly work up with the neck. I don't want to just yank it or else uh, if the neck is weak at all, it might uh, damage it. So just slowly work it and it's coming off really, really nice. That uh, saran wrap is such a nice uh, thing. Yeah, push that down up top. And yeah, just kind of force it down in there. Uh, yes, there we go. And then we want to be really careful with these. We want these to set for a good hour or so off to the side as they dry and cure even harder. Okay, now we're going to pull off the front. go nice there we go okay let's turn her around and I got them yeah here we go okay so uh, now I'm going to take my safety scissors and I'm going to move my fingers underneath to separate uh, the uh, silicone from her skin and that way there's not gonna be any problems uh, I can definitely cut right here and get rid of this 
and then I'm just going to cut a nice division slit right up the back all the way to the ponytail. I'm going to go straight first and then I'm going to do a little zigzag. Uh, I don't think there's any need to do zigzag all the way up, uh, but this will create uh, somewhat of a channel lock to help, uh, well, especially on really long uh, seams like this, it helps uh, keep uh, the two sides uh, parallel where they should be. I guess that's the right wording. Okay, now I'm going to go straight again. And the whole time I got my hand underneath here, trying to keep my fingers between uh, the scissors and Savannah. There we go. This turn is a little bit trickier. Once I clear this turn, it should get easier. Get my fingers up there a little bit more. I'm going to do another zigzag right here. Turn you around. Okay, what we want to do is open it up on the back and we want to bring the chest part up first and then chin and bring it up that way. That way, if there's any problems with the eyelashes or eyebrows, uh, if she just bats her eyes a little bit, it just comes right off. So we're going to open it up like this and start moving it up. There we go, get the ears out. Oh, one of your ears came off. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, there. Oh, nice. Oh, we got the alien. Okay, that now we got, we got to show the alien face. This is alien. This is Savannah's face. A perfect copy. <laughs> Very. And we're gonna let this mold uh, uh, set up for another hour, then we're gonna take some soap and water to it, wash it down, and then it'll be ready for casting. Here, your proud child. Oh yes. It's a girl. It's, it is really creepy looking. <laughs> but what's really interesting is up here, we used a latex ball cap. And because we put a barrier on it, it caused no problem with the curing process of the silicone. So that, that was a, a nice win. If we can get a good camera shot in here, just to show you uh, how good it came out. One small little bu bubble on the side of her uh, mouth, but everything else looks really nice. Why don't you take a bow and wait, wait, wait. Here we go, everybody. Applaud. <laughs> nope, don't worry. It's not over yet, folks. Prop Monkey is getting ready to fill in the nose holes, and the way he will do it is like nothing you've ever seen before. Watch this. Okay, uh, Savannah is getting cleaned up, and we're going to do a little fine finishing on our mold. So I'm going to take the front part of the mold, where the little nose is. I'm going to set that down, and I want to cradle the... Uh, liner in here so it's perfect. Uh, I'm going to put my finger right where the nose is. I'm going to make sure that lines up perfectly that everything is getting in there. This is going to be really important. I'm going to fill in the nose holes with uh, some more silicone. So I'm mixing just a little bit of the silicone. Uh, there's no thinner in it at all. I just want it nice and thick and I have plenty enough time to uh, stir this up because I kind of want it to set up a little bit before I put it into the nose areas. It will be too difficult to get the camera inside the mold while Prop Monkey is plugging in the nose holes. So he made a demonstration mold of the nose area so we can see exactly what's going on. Okay, so I did this little cast right here uh, so you can kind of see what inside the mold is going to look like. I just take my finger, grab a little bit here, push it right up into the nostril. You can see that how it just pushes out just a little bit. And then I'll take some more and do the other side and let it push out just a little bit like that. And it makes perfect nostrils. So I'm gonna stir this a little bit more. Maybe give it one more minute to set up. And so right before it gets firm, I'm gonna push it up in there. The reason why I do that is so, um, 
uh, I don't have it dripping out constantly. Uh, and I'm just going to grab a little of this silicone and I'm going to push it up right into the nostrils. Oop. This gets really messy. Ah, oh, there we go. That looks much better. Wow, now that's a visual treat. Prop Monkey will now use a detail stick to help push the silicone up against the rim of the nostril openings to make a perfect nostril shape. Okay. And just ever so slightly push that up in there. Yeah. Yeah, and that looks beautiful just the way it is. Okay, we're going to let this set for a good 15, 20 minutes. And uh, could you hold this up high? I'm going to do a, a little wiping back. Yeah, it looks like green snot coming out. <laughs> and I'm just going to carefully wipe that back because I don't want uh, the inner uh, liner to stick or grip onto the plaster on the outside. Prop Monkey is now going to show us how he's going to fill in the hole where Savannah's hair came through. He will use a round piece of EVA foam as the bottom form. And when he mixes the silicone, he will wait for it to set just a little before he fills in the hole. Okay, uh, we are now going to plug up the hole head right there. So uh, I'm going to leave it in the cradle. Uh, the nose has cured enough that I'm not worried about it uh, getting messed up by me messing with this. I'm going to cut off any excess silicone here that is not needed. Okay, and I have pieces of white foam. I think I'm going to have to go with the bigger foam on this. Okay, so I have nice flexible foam. And, and then I also have this little weird thing. I was experimenting with it, so I ended up with this half, half sphere foamy thing. And what I'm going to do is press this up against the hole when I put my hand in there, and then I'm going to backfill it with silicone. So let's start mixing the silicone. Get a little part A in here. some part B in there. And give it a good mix. I'm probably going to mix this for at least a good minute, maybe even two minutes. There's, there's no reason to be fast on this because I have such a small area to cover and uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time holding uh, my foam in place waiting for it to cure enough because it's going to take a good 10 minutes or so uh, for it to cure to where I can release my hand. Okay, that's probably good enough. Hold it together. Okay, uh, so we put some packing tape around it to hold the two sides together the way it should be. Uh, Nathan is going to stick his arm up in there and and hold the foam right there. And so yeah, the yes, yeah, so it's. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Can you can you use that foam to press up against it? Does that help? Okay. Yeah, yeah, this looks good. So if you want to bring the camera over there and see what it looks like, I'm going to start puddling this in there. It's starting to thicken up here, so this is going to help. And so now we have a little uh, convex action going in there. This is starting to gel up, and I'm just going to work this rather quickly. And so it's going to stick to the silicone that's around there. And get all that in there and get a nice thick layer. Oh, this was perfect timing for this. this. This looks good. And it doesn't have to be pretty on the top part, but it's going to be pretty on the bottom side. So, and then uh, up against the edges, just make sure it looks good. And I think that's it. Uh, now uh, we all leave while Nathan holds <laughs> this for the next 15 minutes. Fascinating. Now the main part of the mold is cured an hour after it is pulled off of Savannah's head. The ninjas are going to clean the mold with Dawn dish soap and water. 
This will get rid of the release cream that is on the mold. There's also some black fine finish that Prop Monkey used as the barrier that is still clinging to the silicone. He will use some tacky tape to remove it. Okay, the silicone packs that we did for the ponytail hole uh, has cured rather nicely. We're gonna pop this out of the box. And uh, let's go ahead and cut all this off. There's no need for this to be in here. We can set that gently there. Open this up now. I can pull this back and you can see what it looks like. And it made a decent patch. Uh, it's hard to see. Uh, if I wanted to, later on, I can do a little more patching if I want to get that really smooth in there. And it's easy to do uh, with just mixing up a little bit more silicone. And the next thing I'm going to do is probably, before we wash this off, I'm just going to take and trim uh, all this extra stuff. I'm going to trim it right to our thick strips that we added on. And those thick strips really did help because these edges always get thin. Then we're going to take this into a sink area and wash uh, all of the release agent off with soap and water. Looks pretty dry. Okay, and let's take it out and low dry it. Thanks, Nathan. You're welcome. It's finally time to cast Savannah's head. Prompt Monkey will be casting in resin, so the mold can't have any water or moisture in it at all. If so, it will react to the resin and not let it cure properly. Now, if you're using hydrocal plaster, there will be no need to dry it thoroughly. Prop Monkey will do a slush cast with smooth-on black onyx. Then he will backfill it with smooth-on foam at four black. This will create a very lightweight and strong cast. A full head shoulder cast like this is a little bit more difficult when you do slush casting. We're going to have to brush some of it in with a paintbrush and some we're going to slush cast. So uh, without further ado, I am going to take some smooth on black onyx and I'm going to go ahead and measure this out. Here we go, 50-50. Mix these two together. This is pretty fast set time here, so I got to move pretty quick. Dump it in there. I'll pick it up it around. And if you can use your imagination, uh, this stuff is sloshing all over the place in there. Let's see anything leaking out the nose area? I want to make sure the, the, head hole. the head hole a little bit. Okay. And yeah, here we go. Trying to get over the ears, down through the neck area, <laughs> and just keep on moving this stuff around. We're going to set it down in here before it seizes up and whoop, pull that off and start coating the neck. Yeah, this stuff is seizing up pretty fast and I'm just going to move it around one last time in here so it settles. If I'm going to have it settle, I'm going to have it settle. Like that. Hold that up. There we go. And then the next coat, I'm going to focus on the shoulders and put a rubber glove on. Okay, it's set it up, set up enough. Let's see, it's not moving. Okay, I'm going to put that in there and get myself a glove. Uh, when it comes to slush casting, uh, I really like the Black Onyx. It does go down smoother. It is just a little bit more brittle than some of the other resins, but we're going to be backfilling it with foam, so it, it'll have full strength. Grab me another brush. And I think I can go right back into that same mixing cup. Yeah. 
Uh, I am having a little flapping going on with the uh, inner shell here. And uh, if we had some uh, clips or something to put on there, that's going to be very helpful. Yeah, it's sticking really well uh, where I'm putting it. Wow, and this stuff gets hot when it starts to cure. Okay, I think that is it. It is getting sticky. to move it around just a little bit, uh, get into those ears and stuff. I'm going to move it around this way, get into the ears, the other side. Get into the nose, mouth area. Okay, set that down and we just wait for that to expand. But it's come, I can feel the heat coming off of it. Ah, here it comes. Up into the neck cavity. I think that's pretty good. I might make uh, the same amount might do it. One thing about foam, the more you stir it, the more it'll expand. So if I stir it very little, it won't expand much. But if I stir it a lot, it'll expand more. Set that in there that in there and then I'm going to move it around a little bit there we go just let this set up you can start seeing the bubble and foam You know, I'm just going to move this around with the stick. Just move some of this up in there. Uh, it's starting to foam. i got to be careful. And get that a little bit more level. There we go as it expands. And it should push beyond the boundary of the shoulders. And I think we're good. As long as it's on the exterior, too, it's going to give a lot of support. Uh, it hasn't cured the full two hours, but it's been a very long shooting day and we're anxious to see what it looks like and I think it's going to be okay. So let's see what happens. Fold this off the back. Nice. Uh, once these shells cure overnight, they're going to be extra strong. So just be really careful with them in, for a full day. I need a third hand. <laughs> It's coming. There we go. Okay, before the unveiling, uh, advantage of using resin and backfilling with foam over hydrocal. Hydrocal is heavy. A hydrocal cast that size, what, 50 pounds? Oh, it's going to be really heavy. If you hollow it out, you might get it down to 35 pounds, so it's still going to be heavy. This thing is light. Pull this off. Here we go. Ah, nice. Okay. Oh, hey, nice. Oh, a little bit of her eyebrow here. And the smallest little bubble in the corner. Oh, here we go. Hi. <laughs> there we go. Oh, underneath here. Okay, uh, this is really important. Uh, because of our first thin coat, uh, her shape of her face uh, is very accurate to what her face is now. There's no drooping. Usually you'll get underneath here a big sag and you'll get some sags down here. Even the eyebrow area will sag a lot. But uh, that first thin coat really did help. The ears are looking really good. Oh, that ear looks perfect. 
So that turned out really, really nice. And I think it weighs two pounds. Feel that. It weighs like two pounds. Yeah, it's warm too. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's a winner. Prop Monkey is back in the studio and he'll be showing us how he does a little patchwork on the mold. This will dramatically reduce any sanding that is needed after the cast. Okay, we're at my studio right now and uh, we're going to fill in some of the crown looking uh, parts of where Savannah's uh, hair went through. I'm going to show you how to patch that up to help smooth out uh, the crown of her head. And so we uh, have some of the body double silk here and we're going to do some measuring on the cups right now. Okay, we don't need a lot of the body double silk, just very small portion. So I have these small cups and I have them flipped opposite of each other so I can mark the bottom of each one like this and that way I can get a good 50-50 mix uh, when I put my material in there. I am going to use this piece of white foam. It's just very soft uh, EVA foam and it has a flat side and I rounded the edges there. And as I put my hand down in there, because you're not going to be able to see me as I put my hand down there, uh, I will press up against uh, the top of her head. And so the foam is going to round a little bit. And then I'm just going to wipe back. And so I'm going to let the silicone fill in the dark areas or the deep areas. Uh, and I'll probably work that in with a little brush. And then... Uh, I'm going to go back and soften it. I'm only going to do a little bit at a time. I don't want to try to do it all at once. So I might do it in maybe two different batches, maybe three different batches. What this will do though, is every time I make a cast of her head from the silicone mold, it'll just be that much less that I have to sand down later. And so that, that'll be a good plus. Okay, I have my little disposable brush and I am going to start mixing the two halves together right now. Okay, as I'm mixing this, I just want to mix it for a good minute or so. I don't want to let it thicken up at all. I want it to be a little bit more on the runnier side to get down into those crevices. Uh, you can see uh, the round ring where the crown of her head was, where the ponytail went through. And that area is what we're going to fill in. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to turn on the little light that's going to help me see down in there. Okay, I'm going to take my brush and get a good glob on there and just work it in there. Oh, I need a flashlight. I have a little flashlight here to help me see also. There we go. I'm not worrying about uh, covering up uh, the seam that goes down the back of her head and neck. Uh, anything that covers that up is going to be so thin, it's going to be easy uh, to uh, separate uh, once I get this done. So that is not going to be a problem. Okay, it's filling in pretty good. And I like the way it's getting in there in this brush. I'm really poking it hard to really work it in to any deep grooves. Make sure all the bubbles are out. Uh, now I'm going to take my foam, put it down there. And uh, let's move it around. So I grabbed a little excess that I pulled up. I'm just going to wipe that back on a piece of paper towel here. Take a look, see what that looks like. Uh, that was a big improvement, just that alone. Okay, I'm going to wait a good 10 minutes or so while that sets up, and then I think I'm gonna do one small little batch, and then I should be done. You know, I had it perfect, and I took that one. <laughs> I had it perfect, I had it perfect, and I took that one swipe too many, and I should have just let it go and come back in later. But it's, I mean, it's still looking good, but uh, you know, you always try to push it a little bit, thinking you can do it all in one, but uh, yeah, it's going to take two turns on this, so we'll let this set up. 
Okay, it's starting to firm up and I am gonna start my next batch right here. I'm gonna put in far less than what we had before. There we go. Okay, I'm switching the foam that I have. Uh, this one's a little bit thicker. I think it'll hold a nice curve, a more even curve, uh, give me a more desirable end result. So, got some thicker foam. I'm gonna reach down there. Gonna start mixing these two together right now. And that is looking pretty good, I think. I can start applying this. Get my flashlight down in there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'm not going for perfect. I'm going for a whole lot better than what it was. <laughs> so if that makes sense, and I think I got it. I think I got a whole lot better than what it was. Okay, we're going to turn this around. We're going to get a good camera shot in. Let's see. Let's move this. Okay, as you can see, it's a whole lot better than what it used to be. And uh, this is going to make a big improvement when we do different casts of Savannah's head. Uh, we won't have to work uh, with the sanding so much. So, I think that's pretty good. Well, it's a wrap. I want to thank the Prop Monkey Studios and its head casting ninjas and Smooth On for this video. I hope this tutorial helps you when you go to make your next head cast. Hey, Prop Monkey Studios, snap. And, oh. Wait, wait, when did no, I do that's it? That's it. We did it. Oh, okay. Thank you. It was awesome, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's great. <laughs>